the NHRA Winston Championship season kicked off with a fistful of expected players. And since then, one of the strangest seasons on record has come to pass. The Pro Stock Dodges dominated, then disappeared. A rookie blazed a nitro trail into the winner's circle. Funny cars tried to fly. We've seen nine different Pro Stock winners, and it rained. Top Fuel's top pilot flew the quickest car on the planet. The professor taught everyone lesson number 50. A guy with an earring had the last lap in Memphis. Independence danced the victory dance and it rained some more. Now, as the curtain starts to descend on 1995, the question is, will this last act be comedy or tragedy? And who will play the starring role? TNN proudly presents American Sports Cavalcade and coverage of the 1995 NHRA Winston Select Finals from Pomona Raceway at the Los Angeles County Fair Flag. Yesterday, rookie top fuel driver Larry Dixon earned $100,000 defeating Scott Coletta in the final round of the Budweiser Classic, the biggest single payday in NHRA drag racing history. Here's the beautiful trophy. It also came with $1,100 bills. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Evans. Believe it or not, Dixon could make more than $100,000 today. Here's how he's got to do it. If he wins the Winston Select Finals title, that's a bonus of $50,000 for Larry. He won both of the events. If he sets low ET of the day, another $50,000 in the Slick 50 World Record Holders Club. Now, in round number one, guess what? He set low ET so far. I talked with him. Hey, Larry, you ever been 311 miles an hour? <laughs> no way, not at all. I mean, God. You just did. That was unbelievable. I mean, that car pulled so good through the middle of the track. It was just smooth. God, it was nice. And low ET of the day at 472, creeping up on that 50 grand. That wouldn't be a bad bonus, that slick 50 money. We're sure going for it. And, you know, thanks to everybody on the team. These guys are the men. <laughs> you may have a tax problem in 95. <laughs> the slick 50 bonus money is good in the other pro classes as well. Ralph Shaheen is in a needy funny car pit. Steve Cruz Pedregon would love the bonus money that's available for the funny car division because he needs it to repair his McDonald's machine. Now, you might remember when we came here for the Winter Nationals back in February, Cruz won the funny car title and gave Joe Gibbs his first ever NHRA victory as a team owner. Of course, that meant the coach got another Gatorade bath. Well, Cruiser got a bath of his own qualifying for the Winston Select Finals. Watch this as the car lets go, giving Cruz an oil bath. The McDonald's crew got the car back together. In fact, it did such a good job that Cruz was able to beat Whit Baysmore in round one. In the process, Cruiser clocked a 5-11. But it was Al Hoffman throwing down the gauntlet in the first round of eliminations with a 5-04 and sending a message that he wants to claim the bonus bucks. Low ET of eliminations in the fuel categories is good for $50,000. In pro stock, the ante is 25K. Still some good cash. Here's Bob Fry. Ralph, with all the money that's also up for grabs in the pro stock category here this weekend, the NHRA Tech Department's working overtime to make sure that everybody's playing exactly by the rules. Very big thing, especially to a guy like Warren Johnson. Warren, you're very happy that the tech guys are giving everybody the once over. Absolutely. Uh, what we feel we're getting now is a level playing field. Uh, everybody has to jump through the same hoops. We're all pretty well assured that we're legal, and that's all we're ever asking. Feel that same way when you're the one that's got to tear down? Well, obviously I'd be the one to pick because usually we're probably the fastest in the category, so I'm a logical choice. But if I've got to do it every weekend and somebody else doesn't, then it may get a little wearing, but that's just part of the procedure. So far, he would be the logical choice here this weekend after two rounds of competition. W.J., the quickest, and the guy that's got the leg up on winning the $25,000. Now let's join action in Top Fuel for round number two. And it will feature a young lady that prefers Pomona to any other track in the circuit, Shelly Anderson. 
won the Bud Classic here a year ago, set a national record in the process that has since been eclipsed, and she wouldn't mind getting that back. Plus, she could almost run from her house to the racetrack, Ralph. Well, that's exactly right. She's going to match up against the Smoke and Joe's entry of Jim Head. The thing I find amazing about Shelly Anderson and how they tune that car is it does so well in the air in Pomona. And she has mentioned that there's something mystical about their family and how they seem to know how to tune the car for the thick Pomona smoggy air. Because we've got some heavy haze here this weekend. Here's a good look at Shelly. Shelly Anderson's communications graduate, Cal State Fullerton. And Jim Head, a graduate engineer who did not qualify. So why is he in the show? Well, another driver, Mike Smith, could not make the call, so Head is in. He beat Eddie Hill in round number one, who was the low qualifier. Actually, Eddie Hill beat himself smoking the tires. Hill's best of 496. And there is Brad Anderson, one of the true innovators. Borderline genius, really, when it comes to designing racing parts for both pro and sportsman racing. So this is round number two, race number one, Shelly and Jim Head. Shelly Anderson has had smoked some pistons out of the big Hemi. 488, 286 miles an hour. Not exactly stellar, but hey, she goes to the final four, and that's what she wants. We've got plenty more top fuel action coming your way when we return to Pomona. We're back to the Winston Select Finals in Pomona, California, with more coverage of top fuel. Burnout's complete. And here's Steve Evans with Shelly Anderson. Shelly, you wanted a 478, you got a 488. Hey, we won. The Western Auto Texaco Haviland cars in the semis. We're just lucky at Pomona. We may not be good, but we'll take it. Can Ray find a 10th in this thing? Yeah, I think he can. It ran better. The rods are in it. We put on the, more, the better mags and coils, and I think it'll run a 70 next run. It'll need to. Of course, Ray Alley, uh, kind of a co-crew chief, along with Shelly's father, Brad Anderson. And I don't think she's just lucky here, Steve. I think this combination just really knows how to make it hook up on this Pomona racetrack. I think you're right. Here is Scott Coletta, who did not sleep well last night. He kept reliving the disaster that was the Bud Classic final. He red-lighted against Larry Dixon and cost the team, well, $85,000, the difference between winner and runner-up. Corey McLanathan would have just loved to be in the bottle of the Bud Classic. That didn't happen for his McDonald dragster. But crew chief Lee Beard hopes to take this season out on a winning note. Corey Mack got past Tommy Johnson Jr. in round number one, and he qualified at number seven with a 479 and 309 miles an hour. So Corey Mack has got the stuff to get down the Pomona racetrack well if they can keep it together. These two are great friends until they meet on the starting line and nobody that'd rather beat than each other. What a beautiful tune-up on both of those cars, but Coletta's was the finest at 477, 302. Corey Mack, 490, fading in the last 100 feet to 297. Corey Mack gets him at the starting line with a 464 reaction time. But as they start to make their way down the racetrack, Dick LaHaye's genius mind overpowers the 553 reaction time of Scott Coletta. As nothing but raw fuel pours out of Corey Mack's car, Coletta gets the win and Steve. Well, your old pal Corey Mack had the jump on you at the start, but your 477 more than covered him up. Yeah, you know, I guess who knows? Maybe I'm a little leery after yesterday, but... Gun shy. Yeah, it'll come back. 77 tells me Dick LaHaye is back on track with this thing. Yeah, it's uh, clean, and we'll go back and see if I can do my job, and maybe we'll win this thing. I think right now that's probably the biggest thing with this team. If Scott Coletta can get his mind in sync with how the car is running and get those reaction times back the way he'd like to see them. And this next pairing, of course, Bob Vandegrift Jr. and Larry Dixon, a rematch of the final round of the U.S. Nationals. And they're even in the same lane, if you can believe that. Near side is the Jersey's car, Bob Vandegrift Jr., who inadvertently deployed the parachute with a lead in the final round at Indy. I'll never forget that, Kelly Scott Coletta. 
Larry Dixon will never forget 1995, his rookie season. He's won four races, including the U.S. Nationals, and right now has low elapsed time contending for that $50,000 here in a 472 to beat Jack Ostrander in round one. And he already has a national record from earlier this year in English Town and a win in the Budweiser Classic. Not bad. Not bad at all. Vandegrift Jr. would like to, uh, well, they'd like to flat whip Dixon. But that is not going to happen. Oh, my. Larry Dixon, 4.69. That might just put away that 50 grand at 305 miles an hour. Vandegrift trails at 494. It just continues to march on for Larry Dixon. Jimmy Brock, crew chief for Joe Amato, reaches in. Joe crosses himself. I think I'd do that, too, if I was at the controls of a top dealer. 